Hi everybody, I'm Jack and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Well, it's Saturday morning. Woke up and listen, hearing rain all night and woke up to rain today. This is my last day here at the beach. Heading back to the mountain. Um, have a bus ticket at one o'clock. Um, should be about, hopefully, if uh, everything's smooth, should be about a two hour bus ride. I'm giving a little padding for me to get to the airport. No, I'm not flying somewhere. Listen, listen, listen. Somebody will say, where are you flying? Where are you flying? No, I'm not going to fly. I'm just going to drop off at the airport in uh, San Jose. And then from there, I'll get a taxi to my house. Anyhow, I just wanted to do one of these little weekend videos this morning. And um, from the title, you can see um, mindfulness and um, kind of how I'm turning disappointments into lessons. Um, I'll get more into that in a minute. Now, I do videos every day. Um, these weekend videos are a little bit different. Uh, but during the week, I do videos on the raw vegan lifestyle, plant-based lifestyle, a little bit of fitness, a little bit of a uh, little bit of meditation, a little bit of philosophy, and these are usually the weekend videos. So, if you're not already subscribed, I'd appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button now, and go ahead and click on that little bell and check send notifications so you will stay subscribed to the channel. Um, this one I was thinking about, but it really, uh, I had to smile a little bit last night because I said, okay, it's time to do this one now. I was going to do this for one, something similar to this theme for my one of my Saturday videos for a while. And then uh, had a couple of little frustrations this trip um, that, like I say, used to, I'm using the word disappointments rather loosely because I think a lot of people will look at them as of, of things in this particular of these type things is disappointments, but I've kind of gone to the point where I don't even look at them like that, but I use the word because I thought that word would be relatable to people. Um, I just look at them as little speed bumps. I look at everything now as little speed bumps. And once again, you know, the, the title of the video, mindfulness, um, to start it off. These are just things, this isn't necessarily something that is a part of mindfulness per se. I just like to, on these weekends, I'm kind of just sharing some of the things that I'm taking off my meditation cushion and using. Just kind of things that this uh, practice of mine is spurring, different patterns of thinking, um, different patterns of dealing with uh, things. I think I'd already mentioned in a video, um, I think it's probably already come out about early in the week, I think it was the day that I was coming down here, that I got really ang agitated about something and I actually sat down and, you know, and I meditated and I, and I was very aware of that instead of just trying to repress it or tell myself I wasn't angry or just continuing to be angry. I just sat with that anger. Like I say, it was like a hot coal in my hand and I just sat with it a little bit and observed it and I was aware of it. Almost just kind of reasoning with that anger like, okay, well, be angry if you want to, but... Uh, you know, it's not doing you any good. So I, I try to use my meditation practice. I try to use this practice of mindfulness for everyday situations. Otherwise, what real use is it? Uh, is it? I was thinking about that as I actually sat down to meditation last night. Like, if this is just something that um, I do, say, for 15, 20 minutes a day, and it has no other effect on my life, well, uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes out of your day is really not all that much time. Even if you felt the ultimate peace for 15 minutes, you know, that's just a very short part of the day. So, you know, I, I you want to carry something, you want to carry that with you. You want to be able to apply that. You want to get the benefits out of what you're doing, of what you've learned, what you're open and expanding to in everyday life. So, you know, I, I get this all the time and used to, you know, my approach was much different. I think, I've, I don't know if people notice that about me in my day to day. They probably don't because I'm just not around people a lot in my day to day. Even the people that used to be in my day to day aren't so much anymore. But um, yeah, I just don't, I, you know, I just don't let disappointments bother me. A lot of, I think of some re re recent frustrations, you know, with a, pro a couple of projects I've got going. I reach out to people. People are lazy or people either just, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm constantly throwing stuff out there. I'm pitching things. I'm pitching collaborations. I'm reaching out. I'm asking people, hey, you want to do this? Now, in, the, in a few particular cases, I was actually hire, trying to hire some people, you know, for some certain things. I'm um, having some graphic work done right now. And um, so I was, I've, you know, had some graphic work to be done. 
that's just part of it. But in general, the, the general theme of it is, is I've just reached out to several people and they've either left me hanging, weren't interested, whatever. In the past, I would have probably gotten an attitude. Well, they left me hanging, that so-and-so. I would have dwelled on that. I would have tried to get in touch with them. I would have tried to, uh, hey, you know, what's up? What's up with this? Everybody's got their stuff. I don't know the story. I don't know if the, who the, the various people were too busy or whatever. Maybe I'm difficult to work with sometimes. And that's another lesson I'm starting to learn. I'm starting to learn as I kind of step out, as I kind of put my tentacles out from my world of being a loner. And I put them out and I'm like, you know, maybe I don't need these people. Maybe I don't need uh, what I think I need. And I take these, you know, and I take these things in my head and I let them um, roll around for a little bit, you know. Everything, and, and I guess the conclusions for some of the things I've come to is I can find what I need online. You know, I don't need Joe sitting right next to me. Everything's at our fingertips now, but I get off the, the point. Um, the point just is, just rolling with the punches. You know, basically what it is, is um, I could get all upset and whatever, but it doesn't do anything. I, I try to be, I like to be very utilitarian. I like to take emotion out of things. I like to just like, I, like I tell my friends a lot of time, I'm about getting from point A to point B in a straight line as quick as possible. I don't need the drama. I don't need the emotion in there. I don't need all the side stuff that goes with that. So like I say, is, is um, I had a couple of frustrations even on this trip, but they didn't even um, in the past, that might would have messed up my trip. I would have been all, you know, sitting in the room, not enjoying the fruit, not while walking around, but eh, my last five days have been good. Nothing, not too much outside of me affects my mood anymore. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't things that can happen, you know, there's horrible things out there that are beyond my control and I could think about seeing something, you know, horrible that, you know, I'm not um, totally, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a sociopath or anything. I mean, I do have feelings, I do have emotions. Uh, I actually, I was watching a sad story yesterday that just kind of creeped me out a little bit, but mostly I just try to move, I just try to take everything as it is and move, and move forward from it. That's all you can really do. That's all you can really do. What I'm talking about here, it's not like, you know, it's not, it's nothing magical. It's no, here's a good analogy. For me, it's pretty much as simple as this. You're driving down the road, all right? You're driving down the road. All of a sudden you come to something, whether it is a, a you know, construction, an accident, whatever. There's a detour in the road. You were planning on going this road. Okay, think about that. You can make your own analogies to life. You're going down this road. You have a plan going down this road to get somewhere, and this is the road you've chosen to get there. You get to a detour. What are you going to do? What are you going to do sitting in your car right there? Are you going to get all emotional and talk about how it's not fair? You planned on going this route. You know, this is the route you had chosen for whatever reason, you have every right to go this route. This is the easiest route. You've been wanting to go this route forever. Doesn't matter. You just make a decision. You, you go from there. What do you do in that circumstance? And most people don't make a big deal out of it. You've just come to accept that. If you drive, if you've driven for more than a day, you come there, okay, there's a detour. You, usually there will be something indicating which way you go instead of the way you were going to go. That's your inner, that's that kind of, well, whatever, we won't get into that, that's a whole nother video. That's kind of like your inner person, your inner voice, whatever it is, you know, kind of sending you that way. So you go, you know, you go off in another direction, but there, there's nothing, there's nothing to be gained to sit there and uh, be like, oh, well, this sucks. I really wanted to go down that road. I should be able to go down that road. No, you adjust and you go on. You take that detour. Every so often, that detour, who knows, you go through a little picturesque town, you see something really beautiful for us raw vegans. <laughs> you come across a, a fantastic raw vegan restaurant. I'm just being silly now, but the point being is, you take that other road, or that other route, or that other path, and it ends up, to, it, ends, it turns out to be better than the original path. You got there in a timely manner, plus you saw something great, or there was this along the way, or this happened along the way, or there was this benefit, but you get what I'm saying. So 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to kind of try to continue to share these things. I'm going to try to up this. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to share more of my meditation practice um, without necessarily videos because the bulk of this channel was, uh, uh, or people are interested in the, the raw vegan message, the, the food message, the high carb, the vegan message. But I'd like to share this more. I think I'm going to do another, it's about time to do another meditation post for the blog. I'm going to work on that when I get home. But yeah, I'm just, I take these lessons. Like I say, maybe it's the time, maybe it's my age, maybe it's everything coming together. But this year, 2017, um, you know, I've established a solid, what I feel like is a solid meditation practice. To some, to people that have been meditating for years, no, it's just, you know, I'm up to, coming up on four months, but uh, it's been solid every day. And also I'm seeing things like this. I'm seeing these type of results, which are, I'm not, I don't look for results in my meditation, but if I'm looking for any result, any result, any expectation, which is probably okay, is to be able to apply this, is to be able to take this off my meditation cushion into everyday life where I can apply it and it can do some good. And like I say, after a little bit less than four months, I'm always, I'm already reaping like lots of benefits in my everyday life. So anyhow, I hope you guys enjoy me sharing a little bit of my practice on the weekends. Um, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys again tomorrow. Peace.